Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bitcoin Layer. This is Nick Batia, and today I'm excited to bring back Jeff Booth, a brilliant author and technologist. I'm really excited today to ask Jeff some questions about the future of Bitcoin and where we're headed. This video is brought to you by Passport, a Bitcoin hardware wallet you already know how to use. Stay tuned to learn more. Now, on with the show. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to see you. Hey, no problem, Nick. Great to see you too. Before we came on, I told you how excited I was for this conversation because as somebody that's in the process of doing research for another book, I want to keep building out my thesis and that means testing it against other people's thesis and working in other people's mental models into my own. And I wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, it, it, we talked a little bit, but just before we started about that, but I actually, what it's what I find so fascinating about where we are in the world to, uh, today, and and why, it, and also why a lot of people don't understand it. Right? It just it's normal for the human mind to try to integrate new information to, into an existing model, rather than uh, rather than realize something's wrong with my existing model and to try to what's wrong with it. And so I think what's happening today in, in largely in the world is as you start to understand Bitcoin and you realize, wait, everything keeps reinforcing and you see that it, it's kind of, it's right. It's a ba it's base foundation. That's right. Then all the existing world makes sense too. kind of what's, what's going to happen, what all of that looks like, but it's also that it's that mind change, right. Is coming, um, but if we just realized just, and this is just so normal that the first thing we try to do with any information that actually doesn't agree with our model in our brains is try to make it integrate to our existing model instead of change our model. It's just normal. And when we talk about mental models, uh, you know, affecting each other, that's where Bitcoin comes in and really shakes people's understanding because then they have to go back and ask themselves, what is money? And it opens up all these questions and it will end up changing your view on what exactly money is. I want to talk about first Noster. And I know I see you on there and I, I understand that you're very excited about the technology. Tell our audience, first of all, what is Noster, why you joined and what you think about it. Um, so Noster is what it stands for notes and other things transmitted by relays. Uh, but what it is, uh, so the, when you think about notes, those notes today, and most of what people are looking at in, on Noster is a, a type of Twitter client, right? That would look a lot like qu uh, Twitter and those notes would be transmissions of data, um, on, on, that would reemerge and make a make a decentralized Twitter. What Noster really is, it, when notes and other things, is a decentralized web with Bitcoin built built into the base layer, um, and that's what's that's what's uh, emerging on it. So it won't just be a, a Twitter clone or app or anything else. It has massive implications, which we'll get into. Um, but let's 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 talk about first a, a couple things in uh, different levels. So first, um, all of the clients actually before that, it's early on Noster, um, and that means all of the clients are early. And so some people say, well, I have a better experience in a centralized application that's been building for a long time that already has a network effect and a whole bunch of people in it, and they might be right. In, 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 in so depending on their viewpoint of what that looks like. And then something early that's emerging, there will be a whole bunch of trials. Some things will work, some things will, won't, and there'll be a whole bunch of applications developing on it. But Noster, it's, Noster itself is, is a protocol level of te technology and the clients on top of it, like Damas or Amethyst or Astral, are clients that are, that are utilizing Noster to be able to deliver value to, uh, to others. And those clients are emerging. If so, uh, I think I joined, uh, I think I joined my first, uh, an Oster private key in uh, December 7th or something like that. And what I would say is the change since that time is 
unparalleled in anything I've seen. So the de development in this ecosystem is staggering. And what, what the clients look like today compared to what they look like at that time, it just blows my mind what they'll look like in time. Uh, in time. It's just uh, amazing. But it won't just be a Twitter clone. Eventually, this will be this this will be replacing youtube it'll be replacing github it'll be replacing all of these centralized entities that farm your information for advertisers and um and uh, and, and 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 lock you in will decentralize and and form new new clients and opportunities in inside um a decentralized protocol uh, protocol do you think that the relationship that people have with Bitcoin private keys and addresses has contributed to some of the adoption in Nostr, which uses private public key cryptography and a private public key pair in a similar way to Bitcoin wallets? Is that is that fundamental similarity part of the early adoption or or not? I, I would say that that some people who understand Bitcoin would naturally be a bias to be able to understand this and how what what a new protocol would look like without uh, without having to sell your information to get something perceived to be free that's being monetized by advertisers and lock in. So a lot of those people, in, even in KYC, so a lot of the know your customer, a lot of those people who'd naturally be aligned to Bitcoin would obviously naturally be aligned to this as well. So potentially as a start, but that's not where it ends. It just keeps on um, because, so let's, let's go through layers of this kind of uh, first layer in on any network effect. Um, I wrote about this in my book. One of the reasons that, that I created a whole bunch of success early on, on Twitter or big following early on Twitter is I knew what Twitter needed and they needed other CEOs that validated Twitter. So I wrote a blog post that said why every CEO should be on Twitter. And the very next day I found myself on Twitter's most recommended list where I was getting thousand <laughs> new, new followers a day because they needed my validation to drive the network effect, to drive other people in. And so, um, so I, you could say I gamed that system understanding I, what the need was for, for, uh, for Twitter. And I and and resulted in a staggering amount of people following me uh, out of Twitter. But what ends up happening is early in a network effect of adoption, a new new company, people who go to that new uh, new network effect ride the wave of that growth, right? So same thing as if you were early on YouTube, you could create a ma massive following on YouTube. If you were early on Twitter, if you were early on uh, TikTok, you could create a massive following. Before everybody raced in to try to create value and be seen, then trying to gain that following later on is really hard, right? Because you're competing against the world. And essentially, the, the, the network effect aggregates to the company level. And all of that talent, all of those ideas, why people are there, are competing for attention inside that that plat uh, that platform and so it's central and that that re results in centralizing up that that power to the platform and then the plat pl uh, then the platform typically holds up by holding some people out hurting hurting so, so uh, certain voices out or putting an algorithm where they make the most money from the most and they share a tiny bit of that money with whoever's influencing so so if that's if if what I just said is true for all network effects, and we're early on a network effect on Noster, then it's important for people to go early on that network effect and to create value on it. So that's each individual person's choice, right? To say, is this true? I believe it is. And it's true that they should go early and they should create the value because they'll build an audience on that. Here's a more important thing, um, and it has a major implications on a number of other stuff we'll talk to tied back to Bitcoin. Um, but more important thing is, is because of that private public key pairing, um, the audience I build on Noster or 
if I'm on Damas using Noster, then if I move to a different client that gives me value, all of my followers, all of my content, all of the stuff that I, I do just comes with me. So there is no lock-in. That means there's an incentive created for all clients, all of the technology that is delivering value to be in service of the users forever. Right. Um, and, and because, because I'm not in a walled garden, if I created all my content on YouTube and then, and I was making a business on YouTube and then YouTube decided they didn't like something I said, I'm, I have no say I'm building, I'm building all of my work. All of my time is building on somebody else's foundation. That is at very real risk in Noster. There is no risk of that. So it means that network effect can go on forever. Um, and that value accrue, uh, accrues to me forever or to users forever. And you say that you envision Noster to be a protocol that can potentially replace GitHub, YouTube. Talk a little bit more about um, some of these entities that you believe will get replaced. You, you discussed quickly YouTube. So GitHub, for example, how, how does Noster obsolete GitHub? And maybe if you could give us uh, even a couple more examples. Yeah, so Jack just did, uh, Jack Dorsey just did a bounty for a GitHub replacement. So there's a, a, a technologist building, building that. But when when you rely on a centralized, so GitHub is owned by Microsoft, and then and what you see happening, and what and this ties into money and everything else. But if the state control, controls money, and then controls through money centralized applications that could could break that state's control then you can guarantee the next step of, and those decentralized applications that are uh, could break that control, then you can guarantee some of the next step um, of regulation or overreach by government would be to stop centralized platforms by allowing freedom of speech or free code to be able to be seen by others, right? Just like what happens in China. Sorry, you can't see this. It's blocked by the firewall. You can expect that. You can expect that encroaching on individual rights and freedoms on an ever-increasing basis in the U.S. and elsewhere. And so any centralized application kind of beholden to, to, uh, to this where, where data is stored is obviously because money is superordinate <laughs> right, to laws. And if, uh, if money is manipulated, then laws change to protect the money manipulation. Then you can also buy as a very easy extension, see what would be coming for freedom of speech and everything else out of those centralized applications. In other words, they, there's a huge risk in the evolution of technology being in a centralized platform that has under control of the state globally. And Noster removes that risk. So, 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 and, and Noster removes that risk by, by, by allowing that to transfer into relays that is, that is, uh, that is unstop uh, unstoppable. It doesn't have to be centralized. Your data is secure forever. Underneath that, different things will happen. A whole ecosystem is emerging um, and will emerge. And there's, ways to make money um, on that ecosystem. And if we transferred all of our data up to centralized storage, right, then the data isn't really our data. Our photos aren't really our photos. There are photos to use in that centralized application until that centralized application says, sorry, you no longer have access to this, or now you're going to have to pay. And that produces a real risk. In this new uh, de de decentralized world, those those relays or those storage, those cloud will move, and they'll be some of them will be paid for, some of them you won't have to pay for, and so as those and you'll have different service requiring uh, service offering to the tune. If you wanted to just have your own and trust your you have your data forever, just like a node on uh, on Bitcoin, you could do that yourself. Um, and nobody could stop stop you. You might pay a relay to do that same thing for yourself. But that change from from a centralized world to decentralized world is underway right now, and it produces vastly more 
um, it, vastly less risk to individuals and to our, our, our collective. And when you, you joined in December 7th, at that point, when you interacted with the client and forgive some of my questions because they're coming from a beginner's uh, standpoint, but when you, when you engage with the client and you understood this concept of relays being the decentralized distribution of information now instead of the centralized, how quickly were you able to identify that this actually has nothing to do with Twitter, but it actually goes after every central piece of information immediately. Okay. So, so, so in fact, that's, I, I don't talk a lot, a lot about it, but these patterns for me, that just, I see the pattern recognition in it. Um, and that's what, that's also why I could look at something early and say, okay, here's the clients, here's what they look like today, but that's just a function of them working and timing and understand where that goes. But, but to that point, that's actually why all of the next things are easy to see too. And all of the business opportunities that have evolved from it. Um, here's, here's a really important point that I, that I probably haven't that connects to Bitcoin, um, in a way that I don't think a lot of people realize yet. Um, that, it's the first time I'll say it. So, uh, so it's the first time I'll say it, say it on a podcast, which might <laughs> impact what, um, so, um, if you understand even, so, uh, you know, I have we, in ego death, we have venture capital company investing in this. And so when you're investing money and you're thinking, how are, how, how is that money going to operate in a world that can't build walled gardens to lock people out? Right. You have to think totally different about entrepreneurs and value creation. So that's how just at the top level of how I think about where value comes from in this new system. And it follows something I think we and I have talked about before, but uh, prices in a free market fall to the marginal cost of production. That is period exclamation mark, right? Period. Now you can stop that for a while by, by putting regulation or a monopoly control from, from, from a state. You can stop from that for a while, but you actually cannot stop it over a long enough time horizon because that's what happens with technology. And so if you stop it for a while and you remove, comp if you said no competition is allowed within this sector, then the competition still happens. It just happens outside your borders, right? Is what typically happens. So prices fall to the marginal cost of production. What does that mean for this? What does that mean for specifically this? So Damas, Will on Damas, is essentially getting tipped on Noster Right on on, on 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 Damas, and his business requires a person of one to build his entire application, right? One, and if he decides to to say, "I'm going to raise some venture capital money and I'm going to create something and I'm going to charge users more money," he might get away with that, but then the users would just go to a different application, right? So he can, he he can make a huge amount of money himself, one developer, and if you look at Damas and what it does today and how fast that's emerging, you could say, how is this possible that he can create um, value for himself and all of these other people without charging for this, just through a different value exchange model of tips. And you can see kind of the marginal cost of production for, uh, or the prices follow the marginal cost of production and all of that val value. And that's now competing and that competition is explosive all of other people trying to do the same thing and i was asked by some uh, there's somebody said to me at a conference recently oh well that's easy for will be he's one of the top develop top 50 developers on the planet but but i said well what do you think that'll do to people all over the world that see will's success and say, wow, if I can be, if I can develop like this on this platform, I can create that wealth for myself and I don't have to charge any, I don't have to have a company. I don't have to do anything to, to do it. And so what you can see is how fast under a system that allows prices to fall to the natural rate, which Bitcoin anchors to and is tied to this, what happens uh, uh, to society and how much value and, and what the existing monopolies are stuck with 
what the existing monopolies of information are stuck with because that value is exploding and and me taking out and now i'm spending way more time on noster than i was on twitter to the point where why wouldn't i why would i trust that that somebody else is going to control my information all my work and the people that who can see me <laughs> to a centralized application and, and if you understand it gets worse because now as more people leave they have to charge the people who remain more to stay right as as these two systems change now at a higher level that's exactly what the existing monetary system looks like it gets worse <laughs> because as more people start to they have to essentially take more thing less things that were going to free in price <laughs> and mon and manipulate that money to make them more scarce so it looks very much similar and that's that transition of a world that we're moving into the system and if you're measuring the system the new system instead of instead of measuring the uh, system from the old system you'll see two, two different worlds you, know, you talk about the bounty that Jack Dorsey put out for a GitHub replacement and educate us. Is that using, is, is the bounty for a, a client or a product that leverages the Nostra protocol? Yes. Uh, a client, so a client yep. that is a GitHub type of repository for code that uses the messaging protocol based on Nostra. Exactly. So in other words, nothing can stop that technology, that nothing can stop that freedom of speech and that, that technology from entering into bit and other people to be building on to, to that repository of knowledge that, uh, that sits in, sits in the world to be able to add on to nobody can long, stop it. And as long as relays are willing to host that information or relay that information throughout the internet, it'll always live on and it won't be a central point of failure. It's not something that anybody or any government can censor. Yeah. And, and that's why, and that's why there will always be a relay. If you want to take ultimate control, just like you do on a Bitcoin, your own Bitcoin node to actually build there, will um, you can take ultimate control and you can ensure that, but there will always be relays that will publish your, uh, publish your information. Passport is the Bitcoin hardware wallet. You already know how to use. With a gorgeous design and familiar interface, Passport makes it easier than ever to self-custody your Bitcoin. No more sitting at your computer or staring at tiny screens. Passport seamlessly connects to your phone, empowering you to quickly view your Bitcoin balance and move Bitcoin in and out of cold storage. Go to foundationdevices.com and use promo code BITCOINLAYER to get $10 off your Passport or Click the link in the description to tell them we sent you. Passport is the Bitcoin hardware wallet you already know how to use. With a gorgeous design and familiar interface, Passport makes it easier than ever to self-custody your Bitcoin. No more sitting at your computer or staring at tiny screens. Passport seamlessly connects to your phone, empowering you to quickly view your balance and move Bitcoin in and out of cold storage. Go to foundationdevices.com and use promo code BITCOINLAYER for $10 off your passport or click the link in the description to tell them we sent you. Now, you talk about how Bitcoin is tied in at the base layer of Noster. Expand on that for our audience. So what I understand is that, you know, using Damas, a client that is leveraging the Noster protocol, you can assign yourself a lightning address or a lightning or an LN URL and receive payments via the lightning network directly within, if your client accounts for that, uh, within your um, experience in Noster. So is that what you're referring to when you say that Bitcoin is built in at the base layer here? Is that, uh, can yeah. you expand on that for us, please? Yeah. So uh, get LB would be an easy way to do that, but to, to create a lightning, you, uh, you uh, address and, and to be able to plug that in, in the Nostra protocol, but it's a button that, that people can tip you in real time. And when maybe tip isn't the right, uh, they, they call it zap. Um, on, on at least Damas. Um, and 
but maybe and Gigi's talked a lot about this before maybe it's a different way to looking at it It essentially is you create value you've created value for me you've helped me in some way and i want to give you value back right and and so what you can see is this ecosystem emerging around value that's tied at the base layer to uh uh, um to nostr and and through bitcoin and and what would that what would the world look like? I, I've said this often. What if the world? What would the world look like if the emergent complex behavior of society was built on value delivery? You made a difference in my life, right? Rather than extracting value with exist where where the existing system is. So it looked at like it was extracting value at the top of that, and it was if that extraction of value looked like it was based on manipulated money, at the top of that, you'd have just everybody racing around, how do I, right? How do I become an influencer? And how do I do this? And it would just look a lot like it does. The mere reflection of society would look exactly like it does. And so inside that Nostra protocol, you it's early, it's emergent, it's right, and same as Bitcoin. If you're inside that system, you're seeing I actually truly believe that it's actually um, over time you're seeing increase of consciousness of humanity out of a system that is based on value based on because because that's what you're seeing probably Nick that's your and my relationship right Joe on who we just saw just before just all of the people inside of Bitcoin or many of the people inside of Bitcoin what you see in them is not they're trying to take value from each other and there so you 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 see you see a different type of person and and i'm not saying that a lot of those people don't exist in the rest of the world they do they're just stuck in a system that they don't see what's ha- happening so what's happening right now in this even though we're early is you're seeing more of those people and more of that value exchange it totally changes foundationally how we think about value because the the construct that's that are that are existing structures are built on top of are built on theft and so so what would what would the mirror reflection of society look like if it was built on theft so that's what's encouraging about this it, number one it's unstoppable right um number two it's tied into a direct value so the people that are giving more value will win more and that'll attract more people to try to deliver more value it's really exciting. So super exciting, even though early. And this probably speaks to Dorsey's original tagline about Bitcoin, which is that Bitcoin is the native currency of the internet. And it appears that what he probably meant is that Bitcoin is the native currency of the future protocol that sets up messaging and relays in a decentralized way using existing private public key pair technology. Would you say yeah, that's correct? Yeah, I would say that's correct. And a couple things specifically on that. Um, the, you can't see like a fun, uh, um, a technology like Bitcoin, if a protocol level technology like Bitcoin, um, you, it has to harden for years. It has to harden until the next things can be built on, on top of it or utilize it. Um, so you could imagine even until, so Bitcoin itself, hardening product layer one, right? And, and what would the world look like again, if, if most of the, 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 the people at the very top of that world were most hurt by something that redistributed, <laughs> wealth to everybody, everybody else, and they controlled media and everything else. You could imagine what something that was 10,000 times bigger would look like attacking Bitcoin. And most people are looking through that lens to try to understand Bitcoin. So, so you really have to get outside of the system to be able to understand Bitcoin. That's protocol uh, layer one. And then layer two, until lightning is there and is there until you can transact on top of it, it could do nothing. Right, it just tick tock next block, <laughs> do, do, do nothing, and 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 so they harden, 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 and they harden because until the ne- and and um, if you if it didn't harden and you built the next layer, you'd risk the first layer, right? 
So, but now once that's hardened and it's more decentralized, more secure, stronger, every attack makes it stronger. Now layer two comes out. Layer two with with uh, with Lightning creates a vibrant ecosystem of value exchange on top of uh, layer one, without with without sacrificing layer one. And until that comes out, then you couldn't even really see the emergence of something like this, right? That could utilize that transaction layer and build into something else that creates uh, creates something that again people couldn't even see until it it was it, it was there and so we're really early into that explosion of opportunity on top of how it ties specifically into jack and this is uh, like i have uh, tons of respect for him because it, because if you haven't run a company um especially a public company but if you, if you haven't run it been a ceo of a company that it is has a whole bunch of investors in this dystopian world that is that is all about manipulation of money then you don't know how hard that is right so i think a lot of people are judging jack were judging jack from what he was trying to do they were trying potentially the right thing but against this terrible <laughs> chaotic world and he was just a, a, a potentially a little bit of a pawn in it i was too because i saw what venture capital did to my company i saw what uh, so, saw what that system did and and no matter what you could do so when you're kind of at the top of that system that acts very differently it's easy to judge from that, that but it, you're inside a system that's really hard to change from the inside so i think uh, here's one of the things it, so Jack came out with a whole bunch of ideas on this decentralized protocol before Noster, right? He has investments, lots of big investments doing this very same thing. Yet he invests his own money donating to people to compete with his company. To, to, to put, so if there's somebody who, who understands kind of put, uh, decentralization and try and, and, and try to remove that corruption from this at a level that most don't and, and lived through it, I think he does. And so, because to make that choice, you're essentially, you're essentially saying, my idea isn't the best, right? And I'm going to donate my own money to something instead of my own bags, right? I'm going to donate my own money to try to create, create more competition so that uh, so the world benefits. And I think that's pretty powerful. So you mentioned how layer one Bitcoin had to harden for Lightning Network to come about. It had to harden so that you could use the first layer and leverage it for an entirely new technological construct. And that takes time. So could it be argued that Noster is simply a layer three of Bitcoin that exists because of the ability to use Lightning Network to power the incentive mechanism within the protocol? And I understand that Noster itself doesn't rely on Lightning or Bitcoin's blockchain to operate, to function, or to exist. But um, from a theoretical perspective, in terms of incentivizing the information flow through Zaps or Lightning Network pa uh, payments. Yeah, because because without that, the way that Will would have had to build his business would have been to be able to, because he would have to fund his business, right? He would have to have tied into the existing financial system. And once there, he would have had to sell advertising because that would was what the existing financial system and VCs would have made him do to be able to try to essentially convince people that they could get something for free, which wasn't free. free. They would have driven a, a, driven a model that looked very different tied to broken money. And so, so yes, a hundred percent, this is, this is, and, and evolution because of Bitcoin, it changes a whole bunch of paradigms of other business models and financial incentives and everything else. And um, because of that, and we're so early in that stage that we don't see how, okay, this one and this one over here. And if I had looked at Fetty or if I looked at Breeze or some of the other stuff that we're invested in that, uh, that are going to radically advance this ecosystem. 
um, and create opportunities for other things to be developed that we can't even see today. Um, that's why it's just, I actually can't, I, I cannot believe there's not more capital chasing this because, um, because it's the most exciting space in the planet today. Um, and, 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 and all of the opportunity that uh, drives it, I just actually, I'm, I'm surprised, I'm really surprised. And would you also say that, or characterize for us how Noster would have come about if it wasn't for the instant settlement of Lightning Network. In other words, does the idea of Noster and zapping and having that internal incentive of Bitcoin, does it even make sense if you have to use the blockchain for transactions or does Lightning Network itself unlock the idea and, you know, making uh, really stressing the importance of Lightning and something that I've been now trying to talk about more and introduce, which is that Lightning Network itself is part of Bitcoin's DNA and Bitcoin 101 and Lightning Network should be taught alongside Bitcoin if you're teaching this concept from first principle, uh, first principles. Yeah, I, I totally believe so. Um, the, so they are, they are intertwined, but let's just, that's why they come in layers is really important, right? Most, everybody what likes to talk about technology protocols, right? But technology protocols are very few and far between. Um, and, and most things are things built on top of protocols. So everyone wants to say it's a protocol or a platform and everything else, instead of understanding how the protocol uh, is different. They, they, um, and it's it, it, most of our value out of the existing web is on top of a protocol stack that's been here, um, that been here for a long time, that, that the applications built on top of that protocol stack, one of them being what we're on right now, right? Riverside on top of that protocol stack is, is you couldn't see all of the value delivered until the applications were built on top of the protocol stack. And there wasn't even an ability to build um, certain applications until that protocol stack had hard hardened. That's what's happening. That protocol stack is actually happening. And so when you talk about Bitcoin and, and, and lightning, I agree with you in the train. But most of that is going to just move into the background, right? And people won't even need to know about it because the, like how many people teach TCP IP right now, right? It's just, it's, 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 they, they extract, they get value from the tools they're using on top of, uh, uh, of top of these. And that's what's happening right now. And so one of those tools or one of those clients or application layers is Damas and people are getting value. And they're seeing more and more value and they don't really realize what's happening underneath is it's going to ensure that value accrues to everybody as, as uh, uh, through this, through the different, uh, uh, through the different value exchange incentives and how that, uh, how that aligns. And that's because of Bitcoin first, the primary pro and lightning and, and soon to me other things. And this question is related to what you just discussed, but why did Noster take so long now, now that it exists and it makes sense that this is a protocol that can be constructed so that we can have decentralized information and basically <laughs> a decentralized web, but, um, everything is obvious in hindsight, right, Jeff? So, uh, now that it's obvious to you, you said that you recognize that Noster potentially replaces YouTube instantly when you first used it and that it would take time, then why did it take so long? And maybe why did it happen when it did? Well, I, I would say that for, I'll bet you most of the people, I bet probably 50% of your audience still isn't on Noster. Right. Um, and I'll bet, uh, and, and I'll bet that they're not because, oh, it's clunky. It was easier or the, the legacy bias of, I get enough value from uh, Twitter that I don't even think about it. Or they're Maybe. like me and just sorry to interrupt, but, or they're like me and they're, they've, they're on it. They've, they've started to engage with it, but maybe it's, um, there's a learning curve and there's, um, 
there's a hesitancy that will ease itself through time and through experience and through conversations like this. The reason I'm reached out, I reached out to you, Jeff, is I wanted you to bring us and our audience up to speed because I know that when you recognize technology, you recognize it quickly and you can also translate it to the masses and teach us. Yeah. And, and, and maybe Nick, maybe on and some things I've been wrong before, maybe I'm wrong, wrong on something. I suspect that this is again, inevitable, just like Bitcoin's inevitable in that transition. So it's easy to see right now what we're talking about, but then when people aren't on Bitcoin yet, we don't see it. Right. Good. And they're doing the same thing, right? Most of their value. Oh, well, maybe I just buy Bitcoin, but most of my time I'm going to spend in this other world. Right. Maybe I'm going to start a Noster thing, but most of my time I'm going to spend on Twitter without a realization that their time and what they're doing is reinforcing the thing they don't want in the world. Right. Because of that bias of, of that legacy bias and, and staying there. And because the new emergent properties and new what's what's happening isn't fully developed yet. But by spending more time in the, the world that you're kind of wanting to create, you're actually having an advantage. I, I, I couldn't believe yesterday. I think I, I think I got one hundred and sixty thousand sats that uh, that 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 people were just donating. That and I'm I'm just is uh, who does that right? And I'm just wow right like the um, and I've been uh, that st- type of stuff. I'll just pass on. But it's but I'll, I'll tell you even for me. Um, it just feels valuable. Like it's just so it, it, what, it, what it says is other people are valuing what you have to uh, have to say or do. You've made a difference in their life and it feels good. So more and more people are going to start doing that and it's going to, and, it, and, and it's going to emerge and it's going to create this ecosystem. That ecosystem is very much in line with what I think most people want in the world. Um, and, and, and that's, that's ultimately why it's inevitable, but we're really early and it's and it crazy. <laughs> um, so you provide a lot of value to this ecosystem through your podcast, through, through, uh, through, uh, through your books, through your teaching, and you've impacted a whole bunch of other people. You should be on this and you should be spending a bunch of time there because you'll benefit and other people will benefit more as, as a result. Well, I can assure you that after this conversation, um, I'm taking a fresh look or not even a fresh look, but, uh, now I'm entering it with more education and education is power. Knowledge is power. And, um, that's what we do here at the Bitcoin layer. We have guest lectures because yes, I'm a teacher, but that doesn't mean I should be the only teacher. There are millions of teachers and we have to do our best front to extract that information from other people so that we can all share that information, benefit from it. And, you know, uh, Jeff, I hope you write another book so that you can <laughs> continue to uh, disseminate this uh, type of information. I have uh, one last question. You can take it really whatever direction that you want. Talk about the adoption path for Bitcoin. Your thesis is about the cost of production falling to zero as technology takes a hold of everything. And I know how Bitcoin folds folds into that thesis, but talk to us about where Bitcoin is today and what do you see in terms of the adoption path for Bitcoin? Let's just call it over the next couple of years. So um, I, I, how about I give you the most probable Right, because in anything like this, it's a probability scenario, um, and you could say at edges there's faster or slower, uh, slower paths. But I, in doing that, I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you a story about a friend of mine um, who who climbed mountains for ho- uh, hospital foundations, so so for for kids with cancer. And in one of his, and uh, I think it was McKinley where he landed. Uh, and it was a, t- a tough landing, and when it, it, and as they were circling or whatever, and they had to kind of land on this upslope on the on on the ice, and uh, um, and there was a plane turned over, right? And uh, and when he landed, he talked to pilot. He goes, "I guess that uh, that airline's out of business." Uh, and he goes, "What happened?" He goes, "Everybody died." And he said, "I guess that airline's out of business." And, uh, and the pilot looks at him, 
no, that, that's our ROI. Um, and uh, and my friend uh, said, uh, uh, looks at him with kind of in bewilderment, and then the pilot goes, huh, "People forget, right?" And and that is an important story, I think, for how people view the world, right? And 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 so there's a lot of people in Venezuela right now. There's a lot of people in Lebanon right now. There's a massive currency devaluation Nigeria and I would say the majority of those people in those regions haven't yet come to understand Bitcoin right and what that'll do in a world that we live in right now is it'll reinforce the existing system right and it and it'll create a lower price in those markets right where capital race to that those low markets assuming that they're not war-torn Right to take advantage of the labor created by the lower price by extracting value, and that lower price la- labor by extracting that will convince people. Okay, well now I'm re- rebuilding it again before it gets wiped out again, right? And they'll forget, and they will be on this treadmill over and over again. And every time they forget, and they on this treadmill, more and more people will move into Bitcoin. More and more people understand, um, and. Inside of that, what that'll mean is there's going to be more chaos and more proxy wars exploding because most people will rely on the existing system, thinking it's saving them when it's actually uh, hurting them. And we're trying to, and, and in Bitcoin, has a, anyone in Bitcoin would have a different view of the world that's, a, that's emerging. And it's the speed of that of new world and how many people are spending their time in the new world versus the old one that'll drive this adoption rate. But I do expect it's not going to be, it's not, each country will be different. <laughs> each uh, each re- region will be different and it won't be, it won't be a straight line. But I said one thing to, to people listening, it, or two things, try to spend more of your time in the world you wanna create, right? Actively think about spending, more, biasing your time in the world that you wanna create actively search out people who are doing that and spend more time there um uh, and then to uh retain flexibility it's going to be it's going to be a little crazy jeff booth thank you so much for joining us again here at the bitcoin layer please give our audience where to find you and what you want them to uh, look for from you what you're working on uh pro- probably not you could look at if if you're venture if you're uh company building in this space, look us up at EgoDeath Capital. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I have a personal website at jeffbooth.ca. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, and where I'll, I have my public key on Noster, so you can follow me there. Excellent. So go follow Jeff on Noster and get signed up. Jeff Booth, thank you so much again for joining us here at the Bitcoin Layer. Uh, no problem, Nick. Passport is the Bitcoin hardware wallet you already know how to use. With a gorgeous design and familiar interface, Passport makes it easier than ever to self-custody your Bitcoin. No more sitting at your computer or squinting at tiny screens. Passport seamlessly connects to your phone, empowering you to quickly view your balance and move Bitcoin in and out of cold storage. Go to foundationdevices.com and use promo code BitcoinLayer for $10 off your Passport or click the link in the description to tell them we sent you. Make sure to subscribe to our newsletter at thebitcoinlayer.com slash subscribe to get all of our up-to-date research and analysis. Mm-hmm.